Let's welcome our panel moderator, co-founder and CEO of RevLifter, Simon Bird. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. I hope everyone had a nice lunch today. Uh, today, I have the absolute pr uh, pleasure and privilege of uh, hosting today's session around emerging technologies in the affiliate channel um, and welcoming our fellow presenters. So today, we're going to cover off a few things. So I'll start off with a quick introduction as to who I am, and then we're going to hear from our three presenters today about their emerging technologies. And then I'd like to uh, invite uh, you, the audience, to ask some questions, and please ask the really hard ones as well. Um, and then we're going to, I'll do a kind of uh, key takeaway from the session afterwards. So thank you very much for coming today. So uh, briefly uh, about me. So, uh, you know, some of you might realize based on my accent, I'm not from the US. So originally I'm from Australia, and then I moved to the UK about 16 years ago. And like a lot of us in the, in the room, I fell into affiliate marketing. Um, so I've had the pleasure of working in affiliate marketing for about 15 years. I've worked network side, then I worked publisher side at savings.com. I grew their international division. Uh, and then more recently, uh, I launched uh, uh, RevLifter with my co-founder, Ryan. Um, so it's been a really exciting journey. And one thing I've done throughout that time, I've also invested in several startups as well. So I'm a massive fan of emerging technologies. I really care about the industry. I'm very involved in the IAB. And I genuinely believe the way to grow the industry is through innovation. Uh, so a little bit about RevLifter. So we started RevLifter two years ago, and we're massively disrupting uh, the deal space. So we're doing real-time personalized offers. So one of the things that I want us to explore today is the idea of how do we use data more right across the industry. So like I mentioned before, innovation really is the key to growing the industry. And I believe that there are three main pillars we should be exploring in order to make this successful. And I think the first thing, and perhaps the more obvious thing, is whatever we do, we have to make sure it's completely consumer-centric. And we have to also make sure that whatever we do with new innovations ticks all the boxes from a retailer's point of view as well. Uh, secondly, it's really important that whatever we do, too, is scalable, so we can scale across markets, across consumer types, that kind of thing. I think that's really important. But also embracing data. And when I talk about data, I think we're about to go through a really amazing change in affiliate marketing where I, I genuinely believe there should be a three-way data share between uh, publishers, retailers, and also through the affiliate network as well, but also embracing data outside of the affiliate channel. So embracing things like the weather, uh, the time of day, the location, whatever it might be, to enhance the way we serve consumers. And then lastly, I genuinely believe the industry is also going through a real change when it comes to the way that we deal with each other. I think the word affiliate is a little bit old school for me. I genuinely believe that the, thing, the more successful innovations are going to be through true partnerships, where both the retailer, uh, the network, the agency, the publisher all work really hard together to make a great outcome. But also, we have to prove incrementality. The spirit of affiliate marketing was always about creating sales that otherwise wouldn't have happened. Um, so it's really important we always try and demonstrate incrementality as well. So without further ado, um, I'm going to uh, introduce the presenters today. So today we're going to hear from Claire from uh, ShopTagger, uh, from Deanna from JetBlack, and then uh, we're going to hear from Matt from Drop, and then I'm going to finish that again with some questions from, from myself and then also from the audience. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce Claire, our first presenter today. Thank you, Simon. Um, hi, my name is yeah, Claire Bolo. Sorry, you just introduced me. <laughs> so wonderful to be with you guys here in beautiful, sunny Santa Barbara. Um, I want to share a story with you guys. I'm sure one that many shoppers can relate to. Um, I am going to a wedding, and I have to shop for um, a dress in a specific color. So what do I do? I jump on to online shopping, multiple websites. Um, only to find out hours later, I have 20 tabs open, and I decide to put it down and look at it the next day, only to still feel overwhelmed, um, and I can't remember like where my favorite um, item was or which site, um, but with ShopTagger, um, that's not the case. So not only did I, as a customer, walk away from the um, all, from all my tabs. Um, also, the business probably lost out on a customer as well, and I lost out on a great deal. Um, we are a global shopping app, um, and <laughs> I 
global shopping app that has over 1.2 million users. Uh, you can download ShopTagger from your phone or the comfort of your laptop. We support over 4,000 stores and counting and give users the ability and freedom to manage all of their products in one place and even create bespoke wish lists. Uh, once they save an item, we automatically notify them if the price has changed and, and, or inventory levels, let them know if it's back in stock, um, and keeping your brand top of mind towards our users. So in a few easy clicks, any shopper can save um, the item they want in their specific size and color. Um, so there's no more getting your items kicked out of uh, websites or shopping carts or missing out on a great deal or losing that item that you were once interested in. So once downloaded, ShopTaggers can share their item to ShopTagger, like so, to the mobile app. And once the item is saved, you can go onto your dashboard and check it out. And then once you get the notifications, um, and the shopper is ready to buy, we can redirect them back to the shopping um, site for checkout. Um, our main market is the US and we're gaining global momentum quickly. Um, and ShopTagger helps lifestyle brands connect with a large audience of shoppers who are currently using ShopTagger in their everyday lives uh, to plan and organize their future purchases. We also help our users shop smarter and with confidence, increasing our gross margin value for our partners year over year. Our goal is to not only help our users to save time and money in the process, but to strengthen the relationships between um, our partners and our members while creating long-term revenue. Here are a few examples of ways we can help boost lifestyle brands, um, whether it be apparel, home, tech, um, and beyond, such as inclusion placements, dedicated placements, such as in-app messaging, um, newsletters, push notifications for both mobile and desktop. Here are a few featuring Nordstrom, net porte via our dashboard apps, pop-ups, and our email notification banners. These are multiple ways we can help drive our traffic to you. And we would love for you to be part of the evolution of online shopping with ShopTagger. Um, let me know if you have any questions or additional insight. Um, thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, now I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Deanna, who's going to talk about Jet Black. Thank you. My name is Deanna, and I am one of the co-founders of Team Bespoke, and I'm thrilled to be here today representing Jet Black, one of our clients. Um, Jet Black is a text message and voice phase based membership concierge shopping service. Um, they're currently serving high um, income women in New York, um, Manhattan to be exact. And essentially they are a membership concierge personal assistant, all tied into one. Um, Jet Black is a startup company within the incubation arm of Walmart, uh, the store number eight. And I would love to show you a closer look at how Jay works.
as you can see, it takes a lot of the leg work out of getting really great products for herself, for her family, for birthday gifts or whatnot. Um, the customer is a, typically a working mother, um, very high net worth, and just simply doesn't have the time to do the research and the shopping and doesn't want to be inundated with emails and such um, from, from retailers, but then also the confirmations and the shipping. So Jet Black actually takes this step for them. Um, they're a trusted partner for the member, and they, they really just make shopping um, as easy as it possibly can. Um, the members typically are a mobile first shopper, so they're very, very comfortable shopping via their phone, via text message or voice. Um, they have a very large social influence themselves, and they're always on the go. Um, so this just makes it very convenient for them to get what they need when they need it. Um, so how does Jet Black actually know, as you saw in the video, how do they know that the race car toddler bed was what they needed? So when a member is onboarded, they're actually um, interviewed over the phone, and if they prefer, a Jet Black um, concierge can actually go into their home and take inventory on what's there. So it's really cool. So if they're going to recommend new bedding for Olivia, they know that her room's currently purple and pink. So they're not going to put something in there that would clash. So again, it takes away those steps, um, and it makes the yes <laughs> for the conversion of the, of the item to order just way easier for the member. Um, so it, it's great for a retailer because um, your conversion rates are going to be higher if you partner with Jet Black because the concierge knows what they're typically going to say yes or no to um, via the onboarding process, but then also um, past purchases. They, they have that information available to them and they use it. They use the data. Um, and it's everything. As you saw, it could be diapers for Max because they ran out. It could be the new Yeti cooler for her husband, or it could be the brand new Gucci belt bag that just launched for herself. So in a, in a text or in an order, you'll see everything from $5 paper towels to $8,000 handbags. Um, so how do we partner? Um, it's a really tr traditional CPA model. Um, where we have a large number of partners um, in the affiliate industry that we're currently partnered with, and it's straight CPA. Um, and with the CPA partnership, your feeds, your product feeds gets ingested in the back-end catalog that the Jet Black concierge use to source their products. Um, but the way to really scale with Jet Black is to do a deeper integration. And really what this means is you're still going to go through the CPA process, but what we would love is we would love to get some insight into your brick and mortar stores that happen to be in Manhattan. Um, and just take a look at the inventory levels there and the assortment, because there are some cases in which our members need something end of day or tomorrow. And as you know, um, with shipping standards, that's not always the case. So that is another level of integration, um, which we know in this channel could be really easy or could be really difficult. Um, but Jet Black is super nimble, and we can work with you on that. Um, but with those types of partnerships, um, there's other marketing opportunities and activations and pop-up shop type experiences and more hands-on curated um, partnership that Jet Black can have with those types of um, retailers. Um, so why partner with Jet Black? Our members are highly engaged. Um, they have a high net worth. They have a broad social influence. Um, they really trust Jet Black. They're paying Jet Black a monthly, mo a monthly membership fee to, to take the shopping and the day-to-day -day shopping away from them. So when something's recommended, it's, it's typically um, purchased. So that's a great value to you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of value in the data that Jet Black is taking a look at. Um, so when they're recommending things, they typically know what's going to convert. Um, and we're just we're creating a new way to shop. We're really these members are shopping via voice and text, which is new to them, um, and we're really excited to see to see it grow even further. So if you would like to partner, um, I have included all the relevant email addresses and the URL, and you can follow us on Instagram too. So thank you for your time. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Gianna. Um, I'm glad this is not available in London. So I won't tell my wife about it. Um, Right, so now we have the pleasure of uh, introducing Matt from Drop. So, welcome. Thank you. My sister-in-law is actually a huge Jet Black fan, and she was just excited that I was talking on the same stage as Jet Black today. So, um, it's an amazing product, and you should check it out if you're in the area. Um, I think there's a big waiting list, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through this because I know we wanna get to some questions. So, Drop, what are we? We're a personalized rewards platform. 
think Netflix, but for offers or opportunities to engage with brands. So the same way that uh, Netflix would surface a TV show or a movie that you might be interested in, we'll surface a brand um, or a store that you might want to engage in. We're three and a half million members across Canada and the US, the majority of which are in the US. And we recently announced that we raised $44 million in a Series B, which should help build out our uh, merchant ecosystem, our user ecosystem, and uh, grow internationally. So what's our mission? Our mission is to be the first payments marketing company. So what does payments marketing even mean? Um, we're trying to define a new field. So here we go, emerging technologies. Um, let's talk about some of the shortcomings of existing marketing opportunities that are out there. So you put up a big billboard in Times Square. Um, it's based on the number of people who see it, but how do you know if anyone's actually consuming it and, and who are these people that are actually seeing it? You do an activation at a music festival, you know who's consuming it, but how do you know if it's actually effective? And then there's the typical, you know, based on search history, your intent, or based on engagement through um, the typical platforms, but those are getting extremely expensive, and users are getting wiser as to who's actually making big money off these platforms. It's the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Googles. And so how can we solve that problem? How can we make something that's better? Um, and so we believe that there's going to be a massive shift, and Simon already alluded to data becoming more effective in this space, um, around purchase data. And so if you don't want to take my word for it, take Facebook and Google's word for it. They've already begun making covert partnerships with MasterCard, Visa, the payment card networks, um, and major banks trying to get access to all of our purchase data. But we don't really believe that uh, being able to buy purchase data is the best way to go about this. We think that you have to have a relationship directly with the consumer. And so how does Drop work? Drop members link their actual bank accounts and credit cards directly to Drop. It results in unparalleled view of their, of their transactional spend. So we actually see up to two years in reverse of all of their transactions and every transaction going forward. There are some card link networks that would see qualifying transactions. So if you link a card, you see when you, when you have a partnership with a brand, you see that transaction, we see everything. And what does it do for us? It allows us to provide brands with access to the right consumers. And so um, we'll pick an industry, beauty industry, we've got Sephora, we've got Glossier. And so if we did a partnership with Sephora and they wanted to target people that only spent with their competitors, or they wanted to, to, to target people that only spent with them, or if they wanted to target people in between, we can set up different campaigns targeting different users, all based on their, spe their past spend transactional history. It really makes marketing way more efficient. We're passing on the savings that you guys, the brands, are saving onto the consumer in the form of rewards. Just an example of a partnership we launched with a big consumer electronics company, a two-day pass back of a massive um, reward option uh, based on who the consumers were, went to the right consumers, landed in front of the right consumers, and we saw massive engagement over two days. Just a quick shameless plug for uh, what we're doing around Black Friday. We obviously work with a ton of retailers, travel, beauty, um, you name it. So if you're interested in talking to us about how we can leverage our members' uh, spend and transaction data to help you target the right consumers, please uh, send me a message. It's matt at joindrop.com. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, that was terrific. So um, now we're going to move on to uh, questions. Um, so I'd like to start off uh, with my own questions and then pass uh, the questions over to you, the audience. Um, you may even uh, you know, start to ask these questions. There's a, there's a little section of the um, CJU app that you can start asking questions. But I'd like to kick off with, uh, with Claire. Um, and um, uh, obviously with ShopTagger, it's very uh, sort of centered around fashion, it seems, and you do other things I know as well. But um, one thing I've learned at RevLifter, um, and I know you have an area for coupons and offers, um, uh, some retailers are kind of moving away from coupons and offers uh, because of you know, who they are or they're changing their strategy or they might be more of a luxury brand. So how do you go about dealing, dealing with that when a retailer asks you to, to change the strategy? Absolutely. We work with um, quite a bit of um, fashion luxury retailers already, such as like my Teresa and Etaporte. Um, the ShopTiger app is really for all users. So you could be price sensitive or you could um, not be and just really be wanting to tag and tag a specific item to keep your eye on it, um, just so if the item comes back in stock. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not always about price sensitivity or coupon related. It could be like, I want to be the first person to jump on that new brand collection. Okay, that sounds great. 
Um, and Deanna, love the idea of your service. Um, I think it would work incredibly well in London. Um, so when it comes to uh, you know, your service, at the moment it's very centred around uh, Manhattan and you know, in particular Manhattan and a certain type of demographic, so uh, it seems like wealthier individuals. So when it comes to your scalability, uh, what are your plans around that in terms of you know, geography and different audiences? Yeah, that's a great question. So they, they, are, they will be scaling. Um, and there, there's so many logistics that you have to keep in mind when they're doing a service like this. So when they do scale, they open up different things like residents that had to have a doorman, and now residents don't have to have a doorman, um, allowing to deliver to offices versus just residences. So they're scaling in that way, um, but the next big geo scale that they'll be doing will be the boroughs of New York and then the, the outer suburbs of the city. Um, and then from there, like over the next year or so, we'll probably start to see them pop up in other East Coast cities. West Coast should be a huge priority for them as well, and then also um, I'm really hoping for Chicago. That's where I'm from, because the service would be great. So scaling is definitely on their mind. They're just making sure they do it right. Cool. And, um, and you know, Matt, love the idea of Drop. Um, you know, one of the most common questions we all get asked as uh, technology publishers or publishers in the industry is, you know, how, is it incremental? Was it a sale I was otherwise going to achieve myself? Uh, so when it comes to answering that question, how would you go about uh, answering that? Yeah, we think gone are the days of kind of A-B testing or control groups. Um, being able to target the right consumers based on their past spend data allows us to put the right offers in front of the right people. And so we can exclude a whole list of our users who already shop with your brand. Or we can target people that we know are shopping with your competitors. And so that allows us to drive real incrementality instead of just saying we have this always on offer that our users come find right before they're about to purchase something with your brand anyway. We want to surface it in front of them at the right time so they discover your brand right at the right time. They book a flight, maybe they want to book a hotel. Um, or maybe they need a gift, or maybe it's Black, it's Black Friday and they're looking to, um, to discover something for someone they love. So, um, yeah, we think gone are the days of kind of forcing you to work within your own ecosystem and thinking about how you can target everyone just differently. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Right, um, so do we have any questions? I know we've got a roving mic that's going to come around as well. Um, does anyone got any uh, questions they want to ask the, uh, the presenters today? And let me just explain how this is going to work. This is a tossable mic, so once you get it, you speak into the top here, and then it's your responsibility to pass it on to the next person. So if you have a question, please raise your hand, and I'll toss the mic to you. Um, is a question come through on the app, maybe, or? Yeah, I've got a question here. How much does it cost to work with you? Okay, who wants to take that first? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can answer it. I mean, we have a variety of different kind of ways of uh, working with Drop. We have an integration fee, and it depends on the brand and what vertical you're in, um, because we limit how many brands we actually put on the platform, so we're not looking to have 5,000 brands that we work with. We'd like to have somewhere between three and 400 and then surface the right brands to the right users. Um, then we have an agreed upon CPA or commission base. Um, usually in the, on the higher end, and then we have paid marketing opportunities as well on a week-to-week -week basis, or for kind of the big opportunities around the holidays, Black Fridays, Valentine's Day, you name it. Jet Black is a CPA-based partnership. Um, there are some opportunities that will be coming up in the next month or so around holiday to do some more activations that are hands-on experiences with the members um, that will have a flat fee associated to them, but just strict partnerships are CPA. Mm -hmm. Uh, to onboard with us, it's a, a CPA rate. Um, the nature of our business um, on a CPA basis is that we make sure that your website, that ShopTagger, can, can tag items and users can get those instant notifications. Um, and then if you would like an extra boost and such, as I shared, that could be, you'll be included in our newsletters and app messaging, push notifications, and our banners, both on mobile and desktop, on a flat, uh, flat fee base. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Any other questions through the app? Or any other questions from the audience? I've got a hard one. Um, so when it comes to privacy, obviously, you know, uh, out of the UK and Europe, GDPR has been a big thing. Um, obviously, we've got the California laws coming in, et cetera. How do you guys feel about data and privacy? Are you collecting data, you know, especially payments, Matt? I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. You've got phone numbers, you know, all that kind of stuff. How do you deal with that question? It's a hard question, I know, but uh... <laughs> I'll go. 
Yeah. Um, so for Jet Black, we are collecting member data, um, and we also have their credit card information on file because they are essentially giving Jet. Once they say yes to something, they're giving Jet Black the entire um, reins to do everything for them. Um, so it's there's a lot of data with Jet Black, and with that, they're actually they only give the advertisers a certain amount of data back. Um, so that's how we're handling it. Mm -hmm. um, also, being a, a Walmart. You know, a Walmart startup. There's a lot of security around the data that they do have. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, data is at the forefront of literally everything um, we do and I do on a on a day-to-day -day basis. So actually, we don't have their credit card information. We just have their credit card transactions, which mm -hmm. sounds different. But we basically tokenize it, and so we don't actually sit on their credit cards or bank cards. We just see access to that information um, when users. Um, give us access to that information. We don't actually share it with our merchant partners. Merchants decide who they'd like to target, all the data stays on our end, and then we use it and kind of report back. I think it's going to be incredible to see. We are very plugged into a variety of different third-party data providers that we work with, um, and they're very, very um, in tune with what's happening in the US, CCPA in California, as you mentioned, but also there's a number of senators and governors who are um, looking heavily to regulate um, a lot of this data, so we are we are very much in tune with um, what's happening, and it will be exciting to see. I think anything really is beneficial to the consumer, and we believe that the consumer is able to share their data as long as um, the companies that are working with them respect that fact and allow them to opt in. And if they want to opt out, then then they can do that as well. Cool, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then with Shop Tiger as a tool, um, once you're ready to purchase, we redirect them back to the website, so we actually don't collect any um, data such as their credit card information mm -hmm. and this type, just, um, yeah, more lifestyle sense. and more product data. Right, okay. Uh, any other questions uh, from the audience? No. We yes. had some questions here, but I think you answered them already. So, uh, and we are short on time here, so I think we'll have to close it here. Right. But if Thank you'd like you. to follow up with everyone, you can after. Right, so some uh, key takeaways from me. Um, obviously, what we heard today, it's really important to be consumer centric. And what I'm hearing too is also a flavor of personalization. You know, personalized shopping, uh, shopping assistance will be the next big thing, and it sounds like it already is uh, quite big anyway. Uh, scaling is important. We're hearing, we heard about some of the plans today about scaling. And of course, it's really important we never forget that what we have to do is drive sales that otherwise wouldn't have happened. So uh, please join me in thank you, uh, thanking the presenters today, and thank you very much for coming.